Sometimes you're working on a project where you get a really cool piece of source music and the director wants that to feel cinematic and to fill the room to become what we call like scores, which is a needle drop piece of music that you want to feel like score. I mean, there's lots of times when, for example, you may start with something in a radio, but then it becomes kind of a cinematic moment and that music spreads out into full quality and you want it to fill the room. On today's video, I'm gonna be talking about one of my favorite tools that is used for upmixing a stereo file into a larger surround format. And by the end of this, I think you're gonna to wanna to try it out yourself. What's up guys? My name is Matt Yoakum and welcome to My Sound. Okay, so let's just talk about what an upmixer actually is. What does that do? And why would I want one? An upmixer is a piece of software that takes a stereo file and essentially spreads it out into larger formats, whether in quad or 5.1 or 7.1 or even Atmos formats with height. The utility in this sort of a tool can't really be understated. It's incredibly useful in a moment where you need something to fill the room. And you may think like, well, why wouldn't I just take something that's stereo and use divergence? Well, divergence is one of those settings that you'll see in your pan window and diverging a signal literally just means copying it to other speakers, right? So if I diverge something from the center into the left and right, I'm getting identical signal in my left and right channels relative to my center. Personally, I don't like diverging things very much because of something known as the Haas effect. And without getting really too far into the details, basically what it means is that if you have identical signal coming from multiple places, whichever side or position you're sitting closest to, that's where it's gonna sound like it's coming from. It's basically not gonna sound like it's coming from anywhere else other than where you're sat closest to. So if you're sitting on the left side of the theater towards the back, it's gonna sound like it's coming out of the left surround. And we don't really want that. So upmixers truly spread this information, which gives us different information amongst all these speakers and can make a stereo signal sound like it's been mixed in a larger format. Now there's lots of upmixers out there, but I have to say genuinely my favorite one of these is the Pentio Surround Upmixer by Perfect Surround. By far the most common reason that I use upmixers, in fact, really the only reason I use upmixers personally is for music, for upmixing stereo wave files into surround formats. Personally, I don't use them on ambiences or other effects. I know some people do, and that's totally fine. But upmixing plugins in general, and this is true for Pentio, induce a lot of system delay. I think Pentio's, when it's doing from stereo to 712, is around 10,000 samples, which is nearly six frames of delay when you're mixing in a recorder workflow. Without getting too into the weeds here, I'll just specify that if you are entirely mixing natively, like all on your own system on one computer and you've got delay compensation engaged, it's actually really not an issue. So I work with it at home all the time. It is just worth keeping in mind that if you go to a proper mix stage with recorder workflows, that's a lot of delay that's getting incurred into the system. So it's just something to bear in mind. One place that I really do like to use an upmixer as well is not just on the actual source music, but I also really like putting this on the guide music track that is supplied to me by an editorial team for when I'm cutting effects. So it's actually really useful context to have it up mixed into surround as you're editing. It just sort of changes the shape and the balance in the room. So without further ado, I think we should just jump into Pro Tools and take a look at the interface. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools. Okay, so let's open up the Pentio interface here. Uh, this is what it looks like by default. And if it looks like there's a lot going on here, it's actually a lot simpler and more intuitive than you might think. The settings that have populated here are actually my default settings. So it may look slightly different for you when you open up, but this is essentially how it works. I'm going to hit play here. There's not gonna be any audio uh, playing from the session, but I just want you to see how it's working. So I have a stereo signal coming into the unit, which you can see is left and right, right here. And you'll notice that my track is in 712, and that is because when I choose the multi-channel plugin format and I go to Perfect Surround, Pentio, 
I am doing an upmix from stereo to 712, and you have all of these other formats available to you. So this is a super flexible and powerful plugin as far as channel width goes. Now, the basic settings here, there's actually not that many parameters that you have to really worry about and adjust constantly. I, I mainly just focus on a few. The rest of them are pretty set and forget depending on the context of what you're doing. So importantly, you have your center channel mixer here. Uh, if I option click this, it, it'll go to Unity, right? I can option click all these and it'll go to 0%. And we have now, we can see the signal over here on the right hand side. So it's going from stereo and then here's our representation of the up mix. Now personally a lot of the time I'm going to leave this center channel not just low but actually usually all the way off. That's because I don't want center channel information obscuring where my dialogue lives or where some of my mono effects live. If it's a montage moment where that sort of stuff doesn't exist in the middle, then I'll put this full up and sort of take advantage of the full surround field. But if it's a moment where I do have important dialogue and effects in the center channel, I will bring this down, especially when I'm working like with this on the guide track, like I mentioned, I'll pull the center down because I don't want my center channel having its energy eaten up by music. And then I will say that by default, the sides and surrounds can tend to be a little big. You can even see just visually over here on the meters that they're pretty hefty in signal. So I tend to pull these down between 25 to 50%. Even then they're pretty full compared to the left and right signal. And what I don't usually want happening is I don't want my sides and surrounds to be as big or bigger than the front of the room. I typically still want most of the energy to live in my screen channels. So I'll pull these down until I can sonically hear them. Obviously we're on YouTube, so you guys are gonna be listening to this in stereo. So I don't have a way of showing you this in surround, but we can still get visual markers on what's going on. Then we have the LFE. This is doing an automatic crossover from the low end that's in the signal. Now you can either turn this off entirely, you can split the signal from the original stereo, or you can boost it to have it be more prominent. I actually start with this pretty low at minus 15 dB. I actually find this to be a pretty good starting place. Again, I don't want the LFE to be absolutely humongous. I want it to feel pretty well balanced. And this is my starting place and I'll adjust up or down depending on the context of the music. And then you can choose your crossover setting, which is nice. I usually leave it around 100. And then there's a divergence here, which will allow you to basically make sure that your low end is still fed into the left and right. It's not gonna totally drain that away and only feed it to the sub. And I, I like that setting. And then we've got the exact same sort of percentage slider over here for your height channels in Atmos. And those few parameters alone are really the bulk of the operation of this unit. I find that even with everything else near default, that when I just adjust with these sliders, I can pretty much dial in how I want it to sound. And this is genuinely one of my favorite up mixers because of the quality. It sounds fantastic. And of course, a really important thing to mention here and something that they make very easy to see is that up here in this upper right hand corner, it will show you that the down mix is at 100% perfect for when it folds back down to stereo. What you don't want happening is that when you take a stereo source track and you mix it up into surround, and then that signal later gets folded back down to stereo for consumption on something like headphones, you do not want that surround material to then phase and create other kinds of issues and artifacts when it gets brought back down to its original format. And it's just great that they give you a tool here for monitoring that easily. There are parameters and adjustments that you can make in here that will break that down mix, but it's very good at warning you when that becomes the case. Okay, now I'm gonna talk just very briefly, theoretically, about what it is that Pentio is doing, and I am not going to claim to be an expert here because basically a lot of what going is going on under the hood here is math. The way that lots of up mixers work is that they will sort of cheat things up into surround by doing tricks with phase and comb filtering and delay and even diffusion which is essentially just sort of creating like reverb, like diffuse versions of things to make it feel like it's more spread out in the surround field. But again, those things 
are at risk of creating phase and artifacts when you fold them back down to stereo, and they don't tend to sound as natural. What blows my mind every time about Pentio's upmixing is that it is using correlation. In other words, it is looking at the difference between the left and right channels and separating that out from what's in the middle, similar to mid side processing. And it is ch then choosing where to assign those different energies, the difference in them around your speakers. So if you have something that's very stereo wide in the mix, those may wind up in your size or surrounds based on the intelligent processing that this plugin is doing. And that gives you very crystal clear defined elements in your surrounds, not just diffuse reverb or phase allocated stuff. Now I'll just point out a couple of other quick things here about the interface. So that classic diffusion that I was talking about that some of the other upmixers do, what's nice about Pentio is it actually does give you the option to do that if you choose. If your surrounds are feeling too present and like they're too sort of in your face and are drawing too much attention, you can choose to have them be more diffused. Now you'll see as I go up, this is 85% diffusion. It is affecting the down mix a bit, but it's probably not gonna be to the point where it's actually destroying it. it would, it would certainly be something that I would want to test before actually doing, but you can add diffusion. It's giving you that option if you so desire to have it function like a traditional upmixer. And then we also have these upmix modes in the newer version of Pentio Pro Plus. And what's cool about this is they have this left and right stem pass through option now, as well as bypass modes where you can fully bypass, you know, your sides or your surrounds, but they have this left and right stem bypass mode, which I think is fantastic. So after all of the stereo signal has been upmixed and spread out into surround, it will then take the original signal, sort of like parallel processing, and inject it back into your left and right. And what that does is for like really well-known songs where you wanna preserve the integrity of the stereo mix, is it will inject the full mix back into the left and right so that you have that as an anchor and then everything else that is spread out into the surrounds is just support for that original signal. And I think that is super cool. And I've saved the best piece of eye candy for last year. And that is this output visualizer that they have. I typically don't actually have this open because it does use a lot of screen real estate, but it looks really cool. And basically you have this 2D representation from above, then you have this sort of straight on view where you can see your height channel shooting down at you from above. I like to leave it in this view here. And then we have this 3D representation of the room and it's doing some 3D rendering to show you how everything is firing. And when you adjust your levels, you know, it'll adjust the relative brightness based on the signal. And I just think it's a really cool way of visualizing the mix and you can sort of flip it around here. It's pretty cool. There's even this like auto rotate mode, which will just sort of spin it around for you. Again, I, I usually have this closed, but it's a very cool inclusion. And it is a nice way of visualizing both the signal in terms of power and depth and it's just fun for the clients to be able to understand too. If they're wondering how you're upmixing something, you can sort of show them this visual and it'll, you know, they'll be able to see what's going on. So that is a general overview of Pentio Pro Plus. Now, to be honest, there are a lot more features that I didn't even have time to get into here. It's actually a pretty deep plugin. And what's nice about it is that, like I said, I pretty much only use a handful of parameters on a regular basis. I really like it when plugins have a ton of depth, but put their most important features directly on the surface so that it's not overwhelming to use. And again, everything left pretty much at default and then just adjusting those sliders for how much you've got in the surrounds is enough to create something that sounds spectacular. So huge shout out to Perfect Surround for Pentio Pro Plus. They've got different tiers and options available on their website. So depending on the feature sets and how deep you wanna go, you can choose which version of it is right for you. Be sure to check out their website. I'm gonna leave links down below in the description so that you can go look for yourself. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. It really helps for the algorithms of YouTube. Thanks again for being here and for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.